Boats that ply Singapore's open waters will get a clearer picture of how to go electric earliest by the end of the year, when maritime authorities release a set of approved designs. It's hoped that these will scale up manufacturing quickly and cheaply. Claudia Lim also finds out more public electric charges are coming, adding to the only one already launched under a pilot. For centuries, the Singapore River was the main artery connecting the port city with the world. These days, it's mostly for tourists to take 40-minute boat rides up and down to the Marina Bay. Vessels have also gone electric to meet local rules that protect water quality. The two largest operators are going green further, replacing their ageing fleets with boats that have solar panels. We have 12 boats now running on technology that was dated 10 years ago. Previously, um, we just connect the ba battery and er everything directly to the motors, then we just power on and go. With the new technology, there's this system in a screen where they can prompt us on the failures of the equipment, the battery level. Mr Tan hopes this can cut upkeep and energy costs by at least a third. The new boat is designed by local startup Pixis and made in neighbouring Batam Island in Indonesia. Sensors and more intricate tank will be installed in Singapore's Tuas shipyard. This production method also allows us to reduce the cost of production for these vessels and increase the speed at which we can produce these vessels. Maybe to give you an example for our first unit of the Pixis R, so it's a RC539. So this boat, it took us a duration of about four months to produce the first unit. So our intention is to bring it down even further for the subsequent batches of the Pixis R. The experience along the river offers a glimpse at what's possible at sea. These farm boats plying the Singapore River are already taking their next step in their decarbonisation journey. But for over a thousand other harbour craft outside of this river, they have yet to do so by their 2030 deadline. By then, all new harbour craft must be electric or run on low carbon fuels. But right now, there are about six operational electric vessels. To put the wind in the sails, maritime authorities are coming up with a common set of electric vessel designs that meet local standards. It will also make mass production easier and in turn bring down costs. The designs are being worked on together with universities as well as selected local and overseas firms. I found out these will be released by the end of the year and spoke to the project lead to find out what is being considered. These harbour crafts, especially the smaller vessels, have to be tailor-made to suit to the local navigation requirement. Secondly, to achieve faster speed, uh, a lower energy footprint. and uh, So in order to do that, you have to go for lighter vessels. Like, for example, you can see MPA looks at uh, uh, lightweight aluminium uh, bodies or composite bodies. Harbourcraft are vessels that don't venture beyond Singapore waters, such as boats that ferry people to neighbouring islands like Pulau Ubin. Other design factors include seabed conditions, heavy sea traffic and tropical weather that could corrode the hull quickly. Meanwhile, experts say vessels will need more places to juice up. So far, there's only one public charger and Marina South Pier, set up by Pixis and SP Group, a utilities firm. Over the next three years, they hope to roll out up to 10 more charger sites to meet the impending demand.